We're back with Radiohead, um, minus Johnny, Colin, Phil, Tom, and Ed. Hello. Hey. Hello. Hello. So. <laughs> there you go. Shot of the crowd in the window. You guys have, uh, have this album. It's not the artwork, but it's coming out in stores on June 17th. And um, OK Computer. So it's uh, it's a slow tempoed album, but it's not necessarily easy listening. No. Uh, there's a lot of uh, sounds in there. There's no three minute pop songs. Your first single uh, is a six and a half epic without a chorus. So we. <laughs> <laughs> it's nothing but choruses. So chorus. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Were you trying to push? push the uh, parameters of pop music in this? Oh, no. no? I hope not. <laughs> yeah. Everyone tried that in the 70s and it went wrong, didn't it? <laughs> Fusion. Yeah. Peter Gabriel was all right when he had the big flower around his head. <laughs> um, uh, not really, no. We had, we had three songs, we didn't know what to do them, so we put them into one, mm -hmm. the Paranoid Android. Um, and um, there was, I don't know, I think it's a pop record. I think it's just you can't... First, listen. It's not. It's got a different atmosphere to it. Yeah. Well, what were some of the things that were influencing you that, that um, helped in the atmosphere of the? the uh, well, the place we recorded at was pretty um, influential. I mean, we had all the material anyway, but it, it made the performances really weird. It was quite um, uh, uh, haunted. It's a haunted house. Another haunted place. Haunted didn't you house. record last time in a haunted place? Yes. With the, the older, yeah, the older woman who, who That's right. slept yeah, yeah, yeah. in her room or something yeah. like that. That's right. She had passed away. She used to play billiards at night as well. Right? Yeah. And I couldn't look in the mirror. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. You see, I have to find a haunted house every time we do an album so I can not get any sleep and get really <laughs> freaked out. So then you weren't consciously like trying to make something different, but it just ended up sounding different in, in terms of other music that is out in the mainstream. Just because of what we were listening to, it was different. It was like we we'd, we had that thing where we were sort of embarrassed to be a guitar band, really. Mm. So we sort of we were trying to do we were just trying to sort of go down different areas all the time, and the sort of things we were listening to were like classical stuff and soundtracks, mm. and, sh and not not really like. Not guitar bands at all. Mm -hmm. Board, board, board of guitars. Yeah, do you think the, the guitar band sound is pretty, pretty much? It's it's really ex it's always it always be exciting to plug in a guitar and just go clown, like at the beginning of electioneering on this album, you know. But it's it's a false sense of worthiness, which has now become a marketing ploy, mm. as as you probably know, working mm -hmm. in you know video music place. It's a safe formula yeah. to rely on. And uh, I don't know, it's like Frank Zappa, I heard something where he was talking about the death of culture, how everything, re popular music regurgitates what's happened in the past, and then how what the death of culture comes when that reminiscing and that regurgitation happens faster and faster, so you're regurgitating what happened last week, yeah. and then well, up until yesterday, and then when that point... I, I think that's like, happening now. And I think that actually now it's happened, it's really good because everyone can do what they want. It's just a shame that, that record companies don't have the foresight or the insight or whatever to, to just go off and find new stuff. I mean, in Britain at the moment, it seems, I don't know about elsewhere, but it seems that everybody's just going off in random directions. And I think that's really exciting. Mm -hmm. And we were kind of doing that on each song. It was, uh, okay, which, which way should we go this time? I don't know, let's, let's go down and try and em emulate Miles Davis and get it really, really badly wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and by yeah. doing it wrong, you come up exactly. with something yeah. else, yeah. more like your All own that. sound. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, do you feel like you have found um, a Radiohead sound then? Uh, yeah. I, we, I think we found one when we did, did the bends and then we blew it with this one. So that's up for grabs. That's always a yeah. continually it's changing thing. It's, it's up for everybody else to rip off now. Mm -hmm. Well, the first album, it was more sort of guitar-oriented and more straight ahead, more straight ahead rock and roll. With the bands, you had that sort of uh, isolated hypochondriac feel. <laughs> and in, in this one, are, are you feeling lyrically, Tom, that like life is better? Are you feeling, or you're talking was, about yeah. broader things? I was... <laughs> <laughs> You've got him now. That's it. He's off now. Uh, with this one, it was... I didn't feel the need to um, delve deep into my inner psyche, man. Because uh, I kind of done that, and I thought it would be. There was just nothing interesting to write about down there. The interesting things were the things that whizzing past me at high speed. 
and the high street and um, on trains and everywhere else. It seemed it was sort of anything, everything had this energy about it, out, and like I was plugged into the mains and I was just feeding off it. You know, standing in, in, in shopping malls and just watching people go by, or or being in bars and watching people, just being a witness. Right. More someone someone said I was like a witness on this record, and that's my favourite way of putting it now. Yeah. Yeah, hanging out in the mall, yeah. watching people. Okay, uh, we'll be back with Radiohead. We're going to take a look at uh, a video from their last album. This is just back with Radiohead in a bit. It's not one male. Red. Their third album, OK Computer, is going to be in stores on June 17th. So OK Computer, are you fellas uh, proponents of technology and computer technology? It was kind of a fear-based phrase, really. Is it? Yeah. It was, uh, it was, we bought all this stuff and we didn't really know how to use it and we used to walk around the studio going, OK Computer! Uh, and like you would if you go. knew... Yeah, go! And it wouldn't do anything. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of that, really. <laughs> Do you feel that uh, computers can bring about um, people, can bring about a community? Can they bring people closer? Um, I, think, <laughs> uh, I think that the, the best thing about computers, as far as I'm concerned, is the email thing, the whole thing on the internet. That's really cool. But I mean, as terms, I don't want to spend like six hours a day in front of a computer personally. That's not my idea of fun. I'd like to actually go out and have a drink with someone. So. Mm. So it seems like people either really feel like they're being really honest on a computer, like they can really tell their innermost feelings, or they've got a pseudonym that they're they're, they're totally writing a fictional. Yeah, well, we we have this thing when we were doing the album. We used to go and, and sit on in in, in the, the the Radiohead ch uh, chat sites like at four in the morning, mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. and we'd constantly be saying no, 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 we are in the band, really, really, and people never believed you because there'd be eight other people saying that they were they were me or something. Mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, it really does your head in after a while. In the end, you give up and just pretend to be somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's the police. <laughs> and yes. Well, it, it seems like uh, when you dial into the website, the Radiohead website, a lot of bands these days with websites just have really mundane kind of like uh, information about the band. But what you have there is we an have interesting. No information. <laughs> you have <laughs> little information, tangible like. Yeah. tangible information but what you have is like interesting like philosophical rants and short stories and yeah. excerpts from books you've been reading yeah have, you, have we checked out your website well, website <laughs> yeah no, I'm, I'm well yeah it's good yeah it's well, it was a lot of it was done at the same time as the record was recorded yeah. that's you... the exciting thing about it I mean it was done like in real time with the recording of the album so you guys put this the information into the computer yeah um, Stanley Donwood the guy who does the artwork with us um, he does that as well but the cool thing is, we, we just do it when we feel like it, really, rather than... The thing is, what's, what's good about it is that now it's, we've, we've set up a list of other sites that you can go to, and the other sites have all the information that you need, because they, right. they know all the lyrics before I do. Those are sites that other people yeah, create Yeah, we were you. doing the album, and people already had the track listing for it, and we hadn't even recorded the songs. So, uh, so they, they, when we started it, you know, we just thought, well, there's no point in putting anything of any, any consequence or value on it. We might as well just do it like a dumping ground for all our thoughts. Mm -hmm. So that's what we do, really. Yeah, and it was, it was cool to use this technology and computers in such a way that you got lost in the website because all the links all jumbled up. Yeah. Um, so there's not like a logical progression. So you can actually lose yourself in the site. Mm -hmm. right. do you, you also have some quotes from uh, writer Ra Raoul Vanagheim. Oh, Do you yeah. know him? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. He's a situationist, apparently. A situationist. Um, and the, the bit that you have on him there, he's talking about, like, losing yourself in, in cities, not oh, being yeah, able to yeah. ground yourself. Yeah, yeah. What, what is this situationist? Because you were talking about that before. Yeah, I, I'd sort of... That's the police. It's the... Uh, and the manics know more about it than I did. Well, Richie did, anyway. I don't, I don't really know. I'd sort of spent a long time reading about it. Lots of people told me about it at art college and I just never bothered reading it. And then I went, found this great bookshop in London, in Camden, where they just have racks and racks of books on it. So I started buying them. And um, my favorite one is The Revolution of Everyday Life by Raoul Vanagon. And, and that's the one where it's, it, it just changes the way you see, when you, it changes the way you live. 
in the city forever. It changed the way I live in the city forever. It's being pretentious for a moment, but then this is music television, so why not? That's okay. Pretension. Well, I don't even know if it's pretentious either. It's well, it's well you know, you're talking about books. I'm not talking about who I... Anyway. Uh, well, it strikes me like what you do, too, is like use popular forms and like... You could have done a really mundane, boring rock and roll website, but what you're doing is like injecting, you're sort of subverting that form and putting other things in there. And well, I find that's kind wasn't, of... It wasn't as calculated as that. It's just we figured there wasn't... Put, you know... Well, we had a mundane, boring yeah, rock and roll we, site. We took it, we get, we, and you were bored we, of we it? Said, yeah, we just said to the record company that, look, there's no point in this, because look at all these other independent sites that have all the lyrics, and we don't know what they are, and they do. So what's mm -hmm. the point? So. Mm -hmm. Well, you have, you're going to be um, also doing um, 12 songs. We have 12 songs on the album and 12 music videos to accompany each song. Yeah. So what was the thought behind that? Um, the, the OK Computer is a very visual record. And it, there's lots of images going around in my head all the time when we're recording it. And um, it was an idea that was muted by someone called Dilly, who does all our video commissionings and stuff. And she's the one who's always finding people for us to work with. Uh, and uh, it's a pretty crazy idea, pretty expensive, but if it works, it'd be amazing. I mean, our inspiration really, in a sort of weird way, is, is the Stop Making Sense thing, when they, when they did it as a B-movie and, and, and it was actually shown in cinemas. And the idea is to actually show it in cinemas as a finished piece of work when the album's done and I, it's been oh. going for a while. And... Right, to have like a, a series of videos, like, a, like almost like a feature-length film yeah. of many yeah. little things. Yeah, but we can't afford to do it ourselves, so if you know anyone with like, a million dollars. Yeah, because that would be very expensive thing to do, but yeah. I'm sure you'd have a lot of people that would that Hopefully. would like to put something together for you. Yeah, I hope so. The first video, Paranoid Android, um, what's the background there? there are these, these are two existing uh, comic book characters? Yes. Magnus Carlsen, uh, is, he, he does this cartoon called Robin, which we were watching a lot when we were doing the record, and he was really, just the character was, I just used to watch and go, that's me. That's me, especially Which one is he, Robin then? Robin's the guy who wears the hat and the shower. And um looks remarkably like Magnus Carlson himself. Yeah, he does, yeah. Uncanny. Uh there's just something about it, you know, I think that something about the Robin cartoons generally really sum up how how a lot of people feel now. I know it sounds a bit deep but it's not supposed to be you're so afraid of being deep but you don't want to yeah, be, deep, be but deep. You are deep i want to be not deep <laughs> thin shallow <laughs> uh, so th then he has like a sidekick his pal is that is yeah. he part of the benjamin yeah. benjamin benjamin he's the one who's having the fun and robin's sort of yeah. vaguely worried about what's going on and benjamin's just kind of like okay. and they're sort of making their way through yeah. life and stumbling yeah. along as they go but benjamin always gets the girls and robin never does and so the guy that did the <laughs> The video, uh, was, is he the creator of the comic? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, does, it, does it reflect the, uh, the song content or did you just well, let the, him go with the, this? What, what, what happened was he, he, well you know about this because you talked to him about it. Yeah, he, he said what, what, what he deliberately didn't do is Tom didn't send over lyrics of the song. And he basically sat in his, he, lived, he lives in Stockholm and he has a studio overlooking this main street in Stockholm. And he sat there for 12 hours or something and played Paranoid Android back to back for 12 hours. So he kind of got in this, I guess, He didn't have the strength. lyrics. He didn't have the lyrics. He couldn't make out the lyrics. No, not quite, no. I and wouldn't have thought. And he said it was a beautiful sunny day and hearing Paranoid Android for 12 hours constantly, he, he kind of got into this kind of mental state and he just saw people going by on the street so he'd like, you know, or something would happen in the street and he'd just like take it off on a tangent and write down his ideas and that's what he did. Right. Which is great, I mean, you know. And the thing is, in a really, really weird way, he, he just captured the, the song. The, the song for me was always one about, I mean, the actual recording of it and the playing on it. We were having a really, really a good, a real laugh doing it. It was really good fun. It was one of the, you know, we tend to sort of agonise about what we're doing a lot, but that was, we felt really free doing that. Mm -hmm. I mean, you guys kick ass! Thank you very much. You guys kick ass. You guys kick ass. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, uh, where was I? Oh. Oh, he was able to capture it, and you feel like from, on a sort of uh, other yeah, unconscious yeah, level? Yeah, yeah, there's this sort of chaos, urban chaos in the whole video, which, which is just totally, totally what was needed. And, and yet it's a really, really funny cartoon, and 
I just have a good time every time I watch it. I think it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. Well, he keys into some like things when you talk when you're singing about the angel, and then yeah. the angel appears in the helicopter. Yeah. So do do and angels often recur in your lyrical themes. Everyone has one. You feel so? Yeah. Don't they? I think so. <laughs> Everyone's got one. Or two. Oh, you got that was a nice crowd. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then he. Spills his guts. Um, also, there, there's like uh, dismemberment, and it features a lot of boobs in this video. Mm -hmm. So, is this, yeah, breasts and yeah, whatever. Sex and death. Hooters. The weird thing is, though, it's been some of the senses have gone out on it, and you can understand maybe senses for the dismember bit. But yeah. the thing that's caused most trouble is the nipples. Right. The breasts. And right. I, People I, are more offended what, by the yeah. nipples yeah, than the, the dismemberment. The, I, I actually bizarre. know what nipples look like. You know, I don't have a problem with nipples. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> So you have encountered some Nipples. some problems there. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you know, in Canada, they just have a new law where, or not in Canada, in Toronto, that women can walk topless. In Toronto, well, there you go. You yeah. see, so you can't possibly censor it. Yeah. You see, I don't but know, you, don't. you girls, would you exercise that right though? To <laughs> right now, no. Yeah, that um, would have got really out of hand. No, so that was good. his Nothing thing, coming. his his obsession rather than yours. That his. Uh, <laughs> You've got, you're not saying a lot in that video. I think he's definitely working out some stuff that's that's his. But that's that's the great thing about doing this. We we have some a piece of music we've done, and we get to work with someone who's got some who's really talented, who's got their own ideas mm -hmm. about it. Otherwise, it would be just it would be a one-sided conversation if if it was always just us, you know, mm -hmm. the music. So that's really healthy. I, th I think it's the best video we've ever done, and yeah. it's great because we didn't do it. Mm -hmm. we, we weren't even involved. Mm -hmm. And it is a good point, like that. That uh, the the nipples have really yeah, made just... horrified people, you know. Yeah. So, Tom and Jerry, you know, how violent can you get? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's take a look at the video, and we hope to see you again in August. Yes. Ready ahead. Thanks a lot for coming down.